I've got to tell you, I'm so excited for the new film. It is, uh, yes, it's, it's a borderline insane. The Hasbro have just bought out a new uh, Spengler wand. It's the 84 that will fit onto the pack. If you're interested, I'll put a link down there. I think it's out of stock now. It went out literally late last night. Uh, it dropped on the Hasbro uh, Facebook page. And the, the community just went stupid uh, for it. But people, people, most people are, are liking the fact they bought out an 84 wand uh, to go, which will fit on the, the Spengler pack. Because a lot of people have actually changed their their uh, afterlife packs to an 84 version. But I'm thinking potentially if they've done an 84 wand, give it a year or so, and the, the next big, you know, GB Hasbro backing thing will be an 84 pack. I, I totally think that's going to happen. Absolutely. Anyway, this is about a film. I'll do another video about that. But this is about the film and a trailer breakdown. And I'm going to gonna show you a scene in the trailer, because there's two trailers. There was the American trailer that came out, which is kind of the official trailer, and an international trailer. And they're, they're pretty much, you know, they're, they're almost completely different. The, the feel is different. The, the, the story they tell you is, is different. The uh, American version actually has uh, Dickless. So uh, our man is back uh, in the chair this time. Looks like he's potentially the mayor of, of New York. And actually, his dialogue is over the first half of the trailer. And in the international one, actually, if you listen to it, Winston Zedmore has given a speech to the press by the, by the looks of it. And they're using that dialogue over the international trailer. Uh, you know, it's a completely different feel. In the international trailer, you get a lot more idea behind the R&D department now, Winston Zedmore. I think this R&D department is actually in the basement of, uh, of Hook and Ladder 8. I think it's in the basement of Firehouse. Uh, because it just feels that that way there is there is a scene which i'm going to break down for you in a bit which shows the uh the containment unit it's now massive but it looks like the original containment unit is still there this other containment unit is on the wall off to the side i don't know it's, it's really strange but i'll break it down for you in a minute and there's a scene in this where i think there is a hidden person that that sony are trying to show us that there's a person hidden in the trailer and I'm wondering whether that's Tully now now spoiler alert for people who who haven't seen the trailers and don't want to watch the trailers and, and potentially don't want to watch this because this is going to break down I, I'm and I hate spoilers I have to admit I hate it I've told everyone in my group don't post spoilers this is gonna this is gonna be everything from the trailer so it's, it's kind of spoiler free but there seems to be a hidden person in the trailer and I'm wondering whether that's Tully. Oh, can you imagine? A man. Rick Moranis is back, hopefully, with a pack. Again, give me GB2 fills. I've got the, uh, the... I'm just getting... Oh, goosebumps. If it is... Uh, if it is Tully, how amazing would that be? Anyway, let me get into this. That's going to be at the end of this video, so watch through the video. I'm going to, I mean, if you see, if you've seen the trailers, there's a link to both trailers in the description. Go and have a look. Uh, but I'm going to break down some of the bits I find interesting and potentially need a little bit more explaining and maybe uh, answers a few questions or maybe gives us more questions to ask. So bear with me and uh, here we go. The unexplainable. This scene where Phoebe's playing chess. And one of the chess pieces moves. Doesn't that give you a bit of a feel going back to Afterlife? I mean, are they, are they suggesting that potentially Spengler is, is still a spirit with us? At the end of Afterlife, Spengler disappeared, you know, kind of went into the, the next realm. I don't think this is supposed to be her granddad. I think this is supposed to be someone else. Maybe someone trying to give her information like, like her granddad was in Afterlife. I don't know. But I don't think this is going to be, be her granddad. I don't know, but it's an interesting look and throwback to to Afterlife, I think. Playing chess and, and pieces move. And it looks like, you know, that's on purpose. So maybe she's found herself a ghost friend. I don't know. What a thing to do, eh? Here, we pay top dollar for your possessed possession. Now this is... Very, very interesting. Have it for 40. Hmm. Raise a cult bookstore. 
<laughs> we get to look inside and have a bit more of a, a play around. There's loads in the trailers uh, when you look. So people are bringing their possessed possessions. You see a whole line of people lining up, queuing up with different things. A saxophone. How awesome is that? Someone's got a possessed saxophone. Can you imagine it just start playing in the middle of the night? And then the orb turns up uh, by uh, Kamal Nanjani, who is, I think he's, he's a comedian, I think. I mean, I don't really know, but I know he's been in a few things. Uh, but he brings this thing in and says, look, uh, are you the strange, weird old guy who likes weird, strange things? And Dan's like, yeah, that's me. You're the weird guy who buys strange old things? Correct on both counts. Buddy, you just hit the jackpot. What is it? Better question is, what's inside of it? Yeah. And uh, that's where this, I think, is all going to kind of kick off. Obviously, uh, the main protagonist, Garaka, is is being contained inside this orb. Maybe it's some kind of ancient uh, uh, containment unit. You know, it's, it's contained Garaka years ago. Maybe the first Ice Age. I think I'll talk about this uh, again. Uh, the, the first Ice Age we had was the same thing. Maybe maybe there was some kind of ancient civilization that, that produced this orb and contain Garako inside the orb. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just thinking that this, this new Ice Age, they're, they're calling it Frozen Empire. Why would they call that when, when in my mind, this, this is about New York? I mean, New York isn't really an empire, so maybe the, the idea of a frozen empire was the original first Ice Age, and Garako was released at some point, you know, 40 million years ago, whatever it was, when we had the, the Ice Age, and there was an ancient civilization that was around at the time and made this containment unit. There was maybe there was like uh, what we could, original Ghostbusters, isn't the original Ghostbusters? There were Ghostbusters 40 million years ago. Maybe, who knows? Welcome to the new Paranormal Research Center. I like the fact, and this is where, what I've always said about the uh, the evolution of Ghostbusters and, and Ernie Hudson, Winston Zedmore is now a millionaire or billionaire, whatever, and he's he's taken the firehouse and and turned it into this. This, this new age Ghostbusters facility. And we've got the R&D department uh, in the, in, I'm, I'm assuming the basement of the firehouse. I've got to, it, it just makes sense to me that, that, that this is just all in, you know, hook and ladder eight at the basement. And it, how about that having an R&D department? In, I don't think this is gonna be somewhere else in New York. Cause I think when you watch the trailers, everything kind of, kind of uh, is centered around the firehouse. And it was originally called Firehouse, and you know, so I'm assuming, and it's my assumption, that all of this is going to be coming to a head at, at the Firehouse. I think it's all coming. Garaka's going to end up there, and that's where we see the scenes later on uh, in the trailer, uh, where it's, they're just all, I think, in the basement of the Firehouse, and they're just all in, you know, in the, in the the loading bay of the Firehouse. I don't know. It's just, just, I it just, it just is brilliant that there's an R and D department. You know, we, we've we've come on from from just having you know a little 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 corner basement, and they're just talking about stuff. They're actually having physical like scientific experimentation going on uh, with ghosts and stuff like that. I think that's amazing. I really do. We've spent forty years traveling there. Now we can study them. So in this scene, we see uh, we see Winston giving giving a tour of the R and D department, and here you see the containment unit. How big? Is that containment unit? You see the two, the two looks like the the, the two like input portal parts of the containment unit. Uh, I don't know what they're called on the back wall there. So later on in the same trailer, you see what appears to be a single containment unit. That looks like the original. Whether they've kind of done a gone back in time and and something escaped because you you see something hitting the walls on the side. You see something trying to escape out of the containment unit. And that's the original containment unit. But, th but in the R&D department now, you've got these two great big things in the back wall. I'm, I'm wondering whether it's on the same, in the same place, but just off to the side. I don't know where, whether whether the basement of the firehouse has, has been expanded. Uh, I've got to assume it's in the, in the basement of the firehouse. But you've got the original containment unit where something is inside there trying to get out. Whether that's Garaka calling to the spirits and they're trying to get out. I don't know. I mean, it, it will be something for the for the film to to tell us. But I, just, I don't know. 
I mean, what's happened in the last 35 years since GB2 when, you know, this, this bigger containment unit has been installed? I mean, I mean, from, from Afterlife, we've been told that nothing's happened in 35 years. But, so why do we need this bigger containment unit? Why was there? Why, why did Winston put a bigger containment unit in? Is this something that, that they predicted that something big is going to happen? So they've, they've decided to, to install it? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a bit strange to me, but uh, but cool. I like the fact that there's a there's a massive double containment unit, double containment unit in there. I'll say that again because that's brilliant. Uh, just great stuff. He's cute. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we've got a new little ghost. This little spud thing is, I think it's called Pukey because it spits puke. Uh, it's nice to have new little things. I'm guessing uh, for merchandising, you know, selling stuff. These things will be on the shelves for Christmas next year, people. You could be looking at a full war army of ghosts with the power to kill. Let's talk about the librarian. How cool is that? She's back and she looks good. There's a lot of practical effects in there. I don't think it's all CG, which is really good because the original one was all practical effects and it was done amazingly. And I think they've, they've, they've really, really caught it really well in this one. It's really nice. I've got to say that I'm really, really pleased. And there's been speculation that uh, Ray has seen her potentially in, in the bookstore. But if you look at some of the scenes, it, it looks a bit, bit bigger. And then you've got the scene with Peter outside what is actually the New York Library with the lion. And the lion comes to life. The lion gets, it, it gets, uh, gets infested by a spirit, I'd imagine, and uh, tries, to, tries to bite his head off. So I'm assuming this whole thing is, is they've gone back to the library. Maybe it's the beginning of the film. And they're, 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 you know, they've had a call from the library to say that they've been a disturbance. And it's just like the way the film breaks in. I don't know. I think that would be amazing. Uh, I know some people, some people are saying it's a little bit too, uh, too like the original film. But, you know, what works, works, right? And this is such a good... <laughs> can you imagine if there's stacks of books? Oh, I can't wait. That's going to be awesome. We're the Ghostbusters. We stay and fight for this place. I've got, to, I've got to admit, one of the one of the, the 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 best things I think about the franchise, the way it's gone, is the introduction of Paul Rudd. I mean, he's one of my favourite actors, anyways. He's he's so versatile in all of the all of his films he does, but primarily it's his comedy, and I I think the 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 comedy he brings to Ghostbusters, uh, especially you know in Afterlife, it was good. In 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 the trailers I'm seeing so far, his comedy is just second to that, and I think I think it's just going to make it. The Ghostbusters are finished. Right. Well, overruled. Sustained. Thank you. I do love uh, the way he, he he wheels off. You know the the uh, the lines from the from the from from the uh, song. If there's something strange. If there's something weird. Who are people gonna call? Ghostbusters. What do you want? We're the Ghostbusters. Can I tell you something else? What? Buster makes me feel mm -hmm. good. It makes me feel good. You know, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Obviously, you know. Busting makes me feel good. And she's like, stop, stop. Just stop. Don't. And he's like, it does. Busting makes me feel But in, the, in his sincerity, there's so much comedy behind it. And I think that is, is, uh, is really what makes him such a great character. And I'm, I'm thankful that, that, that he's, he's in, into... And he's now a buster, you know what I mean? I think that's really, really good. A quick look at some of the uh, the, the pack. The pack has been, the, the cyclotron has been opened up. So this has all been taken off uh, in the in the trailer, or at least in one part of the trailer. And you see the cyclotron inside. I think that looks amazing. And I also like the fact that there's a, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a callback to, I think there's a, a real Ghostbuster episode where they've got arm... Um, like arm attachments for the the pack, and I think it's Melnitz that's, that is wearing that in this. And I'll talk about Melnitz in another part, but uh, she's wearing something, and you see it. I think it's a really good callback uh, to real Ghostbusters, and, and I'm hoping they've they've introduced a few more Easter eggs like that. Obviously, again, it, kind of, it falls back into the... There's going to be a lot of people who are like, oh, oh, you know, keep the pack as a pack, you know, proton pack as a proton pack. You've got to remember that it's been 35 years. Winston's had time to, to R&D the shit out of this stuff. And he's, he's bringing the Ghostbusters uh, technology 
into the 21st century. He has to, right? Because these things probably need licensing now, which they've never had. And, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, uh, he's probably had to, had to do a lot of, a lot of health and safety checks on stuff. And maybe this is just an evolution of, of the proton pack. And they've got this a new thing. It's a bit bit more versatile. There's other things in this that, that they've taken on as well. I think the uh, drone on top of the car. You see in one scene there's a dome on the car. And you don't know what that's for until, until later on you see it open with a little helipad on top. And the drone goes off and it's it's a drone trap. How cool is that? We had, we had the, the drone RC car. Now we've got the drone. It is what it is. I mean, some people are going to like it. Some people are going to hate it. You know, I'm, I'm in two minds about that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's a cool addition, I think. I think it's quite good. There's going to be. A lot, I've got a lot of friends with, with with cars. My mate Carl is going to be like, do I have to? I now only got to put a dome on top of my car. He's already got the, the red stripes. It looks amazing. Uh, but there's more to do, clearly. You know, maybe that's another Hasbro thing to come out. You know, we'll have the arm proton packs coming soon for the kids. Who knows? That war is prophesied to bring about the end of humankind. Okay, we see here we've got James Acaster as Lars Pinfield. Character unknown, assumed to be uh, hired by Winston as part of the R&D team. He's, he's a bit of a scientist. He's got a bit of a Spengler feel for me. Maybe they're setting him up to be a future Spengler type character. Uh, who knows? Uh, but you see him grab the orb out of what is, I think it's some kind of unit where they're testing it, uh, because it's, it's moving. <gasps> right, now there is a prophecy behind this orb apparently, uh, in the, uh, certain parts you hear that there's a prophecy, and maybe this is a prophecy coming true. Oh, I don't know, but he grabs the orb, and you see his whole arm get frozen. And then later on in another scene you actually see his arm in a cast. So, you know, it's later on. He's, he's obviously, after he's been exposed to the, uh, to the, the frozen stuff. Now, this scene is a really tricky one to, to work out because it's in some kind of office. There's obviously been some kind of, uh, uh something going on and all of it has been frozen. Bosh. I don't know. It's eluding me a little bit. The, the clothing looks a little bit old. I don't know. Maybe this is some kind of scene. Something's happened in the past. I don't know. Uh, but if you look closely, you can see that the fireman, his hat, says uh, Firehouse 8, which is a callback to obviously to Hook and Ladder 8. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a nice little thing to put in there. I don't know how that is interpreted within the, the whole story, but it's obviously something they want to show. The guy touches the guy and the guy kind of explodes in some kind of, you know, frozen stuff. I don't know why just touching him would, would make him explode, but I would like to push the guy over. When it goes, it is what it is. Get away from her! So here we see Celeste O'Connor, uh, which which is Lucky, go up against Garaka with a proton pack, and the proton stream freezes. Now there's a lot of talk in the community. Why would why would that freeze? You know, it's a nuclear jet of of, of protons. Why would they freeze? I don't know the science behind it. Obviously, they've done their work, and, and it can freeze. But interestingly enough, in, in, in one of the trailers, you, you then see her eye start to freeze over. You know, is she going to have problems? Is she going to be frozen? Do they have to save her? That kind of stuff. But it's interesting that she shouts out, Leave her alone! Because obviously, Grack was going after someone else. We, was, we assume, because of the trailer, that it, it, it is going to be young Phoebe that, sh that, that Garaka is going after because you know it's obviously a she and, and in the trailer you see you see uh, uh, McKenna in that scene just slightly slightly before but it might be someone else you don't know uh, and it's interesting that it's, it's leave her alone because it you know aliens leave her alone you bitch get away from her you bitch uh, Kind of gives me that kind of feel, you know. Uh, but that's quite interesting. I like that. I like the whole scene where the the proton stream, then the proton, you know, the the the, the wand looks like it starts freezing, and then it cuts to her eye, and her eye eyelids and her, and her eyelashes start freezing. I like that. I think that's really really cool. Great effects. Uh, I don't know how that's that's affected later on in the story because she appears to be in the scene 
later with uh, with everyone else, which I'll come to in a in a in another another little section because uh, that's the interesting scene I want to get to later. But it's weird, right? There's questions to be asked there. It's quite nice. I don't know how you feel about the proton stream freezing. How is that going to affect? You know, do we have to? You know, does everyone at the end have to cross the streams to, to get a powerful enough stream that it can't be frozen? You know, I don't know. You know, the, the ice spiking up through the ground. I think that's great. The beach scene is cool. Uh, I love the fact this is all coming in. Uh, and it all kind of leads into the firehouse, I think. You know, it's my prediction that all this leads in. The firehouse is, is the final scene uh, potentially, you know, the third act where everyone is, is together, they've got to go up against this thing, uh, and and I, I don't know, I, I love the effect. At one point, the taxi gets garroted straight through the middle, and, and you see it, see it kind of, kind of pinned in the air. I think that's quite nice. I like the effects. It's, it's just, I, I hope that the firehouse is the, is the, the pinnacle, the, 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 the final point, because it kind of, kind of makes sense to me. Parables tell of an unimaginable evil commanding an army of ghosts. Let's talk about Garaka. I mean, not a huge amount known, uh, as far as I'm aware. And I've done a little bit of research, but I can't find a huge amount on the subject. But in the trailer, you see that there are uh, uh, like, like like hieroglyphs, and you, so th this th this this thing has been around before, right? And what I said earlier on about there potentially being the first Ice Age was caused by Garaka. There was an ancient civilization that made the orb to contain, you know, it's a containment unit. Uh, it is, is legit. And you see from, from this that Ray is doing his research. He's found this, 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 this stone hieroglyph, uh, from that. And it just lets us know that, that Garaka has been around before. Commands an army of ghosts that we haven't really seen. Garaka with an army behind, apart from the ghosts that we see flying around New York. I mean, was was it an accident that, that these ghosts maybe got out of the containment unit? I don't know. Are, are there other spirits and ghosts that Garaka commands, like an army of ghosts that's suggesting this, that we haven't seen in the trailers? And there may be something else. You, you, do you know what I mean? There might be something completely else going on there that we just we just haven't seen yet. It's interesting to to think about the potential of that. I don't know. Can I be of any help? Melnitz in uniform. Yeah. Let's talk about Melnitz in a uniform. Oh, Pops is back. Uh, and she looks great. And you hear her say, Ghostbusters, what do you want? You know, phone rings like, what do you want? That's like typical, proper OG Ghostbusters feels, man. It's, uh, she looks great. Her hair is great. Uh, she looks like something out of, out of real Ghostbusters, maybe. I don't know, it's just, Ray comes in, it's like, Melnitz in uniform? Yeah, that's brilliant, and, and you just see, I don't know, it's just, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's good to have her, you know, as a Ghostbuster, it's, it's just really good, I've got, I've got friends who are like, yes, yes, and she's not one of my favourite characters by all means, but it's just, ah, oh, it's, just, it's just so good to have that. You know, reconnection with with the with with the original Ghostbusters. It's so good. I just, I'm just so looking forward to this film. I really am. What, what a great feel. Really great feel to the film. All dark and horny at twelve o'clock. This is the scene that appears to have an extra person in it. Now, from the, both trailers are slightly different when you look at this. So you see Garaka, they're, they're in the firehouse, what looks like a firehouse. Ground floor, you've got Ecto in the background, so I'm assuming it's the ground floor. Garaka spits out some frozen stuff, and the, the spikes start coming up through the floor down the middle, and the, the team seems to be split up, and they're running off in their directions. There's an extra person in that scene, it appears to be an extra person. You don't see it in the international trailer, because they've cropped in ever so slightly. Now, it's weird that they've done that, between the two, it's just very, very strange. And why would they do that, you know? It, 
it, it, it tells me that they're trying to say something without saying something. And you see an extra person run off on the left-hand side. I don't, it's really strange. And they're not in boots. It looks like they're in trainers. I don't know. It's hard to tell, but I'm wondering whether that is Tully. Rick Moranis is back. Okay, who brought the dog? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, the speculation is real. He's he's come back from a long hiatus from from not doing any films to to saying that he's going to do a new uh, uh, I don't know, trying to kids uh, sequel. I don't know. Uh, so th there is there is rumor that he's back acting. You know, how would how cool would that be if we saw Tully with a pack on? Because I mean, this this person looks like they're they've got trainers on. Because you see the white of the trainers. And they're running off stage left to us. Looks like something on their back. But it looks like something that's quite low. I don't know whether it's a pack or not. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It really is difficult to tell. But I'm... I'm oh, can you imagine? Your man's back. If he doesn't have earmuffs on... This equipment's heavy. Fucking A. I'm so excited for this film, I really am. You know, guys, if you've got any comments about any of this stuff, obviously all this is speculation. There's, the, you know, I'm, I'm only talking about what's in the trailers, what potentially Easter eggs are, are there. So that there are some potential uh, spoilers, and I apologise if I've offended anyone. I hope I haven't. Uh, but but talk about this in discussion. Leave me a comment. What do you think? Do you reckon that could be, could be uh, our man Tully back with a pack on? Joining the Ghostbusters, he's come out of retirement, and Rick is is back filming again. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think in the, in the description. If you enjoy your Ghostbuster stuff and you 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 like my channel content, uh, I'm a Ghostbuster. I'm Andy Andy Ghostbuster. I run the Portsmouth Ghostbusters on the south coast of the UK. Uh, we're a team. We do a lot of charity work uh, mainly, uh, but we're looking at, at maybe potentially doing some other events too. And if you're interested in joining us, uh, have a look at my Facebook link. Uh, to my group in the description. Uh, whack a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on another one really soon. Take care. Bye.